Hey everybody, welcome to this free edition of our Trader User Group Weekly Roundup for the training week ending March 10th, 2023. I'm Preston Brent. Thanks for tuning in. Well, this week's theme is clearly volatility is back and it was what a week we had. Let's just kind of do a summary. See if we can just kind of pick anything out here. If you take a look at it, everybody was in the red. Look at the Russell down 8% for the week. Everybody else over 4%. The Dow moved back into the red year to date. 3.73%. The S&P just barely eked out a gain for the year at 58 basis points to the upside. NASDAQ's still up very strong because it had such a good strong or strong start <coughs> in, the, in January, in the first three weeks of January. But outside of that, everybody had a really horrible week. Um, a lot of it, I mean, it started off on Tuesday when we got our Fed chair, Jerome Power Ranger, Boom Boom Powell. He signaled to the uh, banking committee in the U.S. Congress Finance Committee that uh, the feds are going to continue. They got more work to do to cool the uh, uh, inflation. Hang on one second, guys. Let me just see if I could do this here. Hang on a second. Uh, here we go. Sorry, I uh, just got through eating an apple and I got something stuck in my throat. Anyway, Boom Boom Powell, let him have it. Let her rip. Market started down and it really didn't get any better from there. I mean, if that wasn't enough, talking about the rates, probably having to go up higher. <laughs> we got the uh, Friday payrolls report, which showed an increase of 311,000 non-farm jobs. Now, that was uh, above consensus, which was only 200,000. Although we did see unemployment tick up from a five decade low from 3.4 to 3.6. <coughs> Excuse me. But even if all of that was not enough, we saw SVB, which is Silicon Valley Bank Financial, they were taken over in a receivership by the FDIC. By the way, it's the second largest bank failure in the history of the U.S. The largest was, um, I think it was Wachovia. <coughs> Not Wachovia. Um, but it happened on the West Coast. But SVB, Silicon Valley Bank, which controls about 50% of all tech IPOs, really, there's probably going to be a little bit. I don't think there's going to be a contagion in the main banking sector, though. Um, and I think there's going to be some opportunities. Members, I'll talk to you about it. Mon uh, Sunday evening for our weekly market watch when we've got, uh, I think there's some going to be some great opportunities here with some dislocation in the markets. We'll be able to uh, parlay it. But anyway, there was speculation um, I saw, and I put it out on my blog as well, <clears throat> that the SVB's bank troubles may cause the feds to dial back their interest rate hike from 50 basis points back down to 25 basis points. <coughs> and the reason why that's important, I mean, for those of you that were really watching the markets closely, you saw the two-year yield on Friday literally go from 4.9% to 46 And the two-year yield follows the Fed's, or the Fed fund futures very, very closely. I mean, that's a 30 basis point drop, more than a quarter of a percent in one day. And the futures market began pricing in a higher probability to 25 basis point rate hike next um, next week versus, uh, not this coming week, but the following week, versus the 50 basis point rate hike. Um, by the end of the day on Friday, in fact, we saw the futures was pricing in about a 23% chance um, that the Fed funds at the end of the year would end at the current level or even lower. Right. I mean, we're now we're back to that game again. We did see the 10 year Treasury also move down 27 basis points for the week. Clearly, this risk off environment, it caused the credit spreads uh, to widen just a bit, especially in the junk uh, market and the high yield corporate market. But I do believe that the Fed's 
because this can be viewed. If you've ever watched Boom Boom Powell and all his talks, he said, assuming there's no systematic risk, uh, systemic risk, and a bank contagion is systemic risk. So I think they're going to probably plow it back to 25 basis points. Um, and then we'll just see what they want to do next. Okay. Now, if you look at the uh, chart up here, you can see the PE ratio, the tr the trailing is 1785, the Ford is 1812. All right, still a little bit high for my taste. I think we still need to come down a little bit in the markets. Dividend yield 1.76, 10 year treasury 369. Uh, you can see the earnings yield is 5.67%. And the S&P yield over the 10 year treasury is about 198 basis points, almost 2%. Current VIX was up big time for the week. It moved up 21.3%. It closed the week out at 24.80. So a big, big, big move. Um, so that caught the markets off guard. I think it was not as much the Fed uh, speak, although he was, um, he moved the markets a little bit on Tuesday. Uh, and then Wednesday, but then um, uh, SVB Bank really spooked the markets, and that's what got volatility to uh, move up a pretty good deal. It wasn't uh, Boom Boom Powell speaking, it was the SVB Bank, okay? If you look at the best performing sector for the week, it was in the red, Staples. It was down 1.97. The worst performing sector was financials, of course, at 8.5% to the downside. That means there's going to be opportunities out there. And then the year-to-date best performing sector is technology, 9.1%. Normally, um, technology got a little bit of a boost when the rates and the forecasted um, uh, uh, interest rates were coming down. So that that helped technology just a little bit. Healthcare, um, year to date, down 8.62% as we get into the second week in June. So that's kind of where we're going there. And of course, if we go over and look at uh, across the pond uh, and we go over to Europe, you can see in Europe, everybody was in the red as well. We had the FTSE or the Euro stocks, 50 largest companies in Europe, the FTSE, the London Exchange, CAC 40, French, and the DAX, the German markets, all in the red. But you look at them year to date. I mean, we've got three out of four double digit up year to date. Now, and if you look at the U.S., it's way outperforming. In fact, a lot of market participants um, and hedge funds are making a bet that Europe's going to outperform members uh, for Sunday night. In addition to looking at vol and some of the opportunities in the financial community, we're going to look at uh, some ways to play Europe because I do believe uh, Europe will probably outperform the U.S. this year. Um, in fact, the shares in Europe, everybody fell uh, this past week. Um, UK economy rebounded a little bit more than people expected uh, in January. It was driven by growth in services. So, and GDP across the UK rose 30 basis points after contracting in uh, December, all right? So, that's a little bit of what's going on in Europe, relatively quiet. If we look at Japan, you can see green across the board, weekly and year to date. Of course, in Japan, the central bank made their commitment to its ultra-loose stance on uh, stimulus. So, that obviously sent the yield on the 10 uh Japanese um government bond low. It finished the week at 42 basis points. That's the yield on their tenure. Um, the previous week was at about 50 basis points. Meanwhile, the Japanese growth, the economic growth over the last three months was downgraded to an annualized 10 basis points on the quarter. All right. I mean, just didn't really go anywhere. Nowhere. They were expecting 60 basis point expansion, but it was only uh, 10 basis points. So really, just they've been in a funk for about two decades now. And then, of course, if we look at the um, Chinese Hang Sen, which is Hong Kong, see China, um, actually, that should have been uh, red for China. It was not up 2.95%. It was down 2.95% for the week. Uh, but year to date, they're up. Uh, Hang Sen had a horrible week, down a little over 6% up for the year. So, we're getting more data out of uh, China. Um, they reduced their economic growth target to around 5% this year. They're having their National People's Congress, um, and they cut the growth. Normally, they're at 6.5% or so, but they, they cut it. So that's spooking the markets a little bit. Also, they reported their CPI. It rose about 1% in February. 
Um, meanwhile, their PPI, their producer prices, fell more than expected. Um, and the Chinese exports and Im, uh, imports also uh, extended declines in the first two months of this year. So they're getting hit with some global economic slowdown uh, trade activity. Uh, exports were down, I think, 6.8% in January and February. So they're not doing very well. I, I do believe the economy, as it slows down, um, members will go through in more detail on the charts, just what I'm looking at and what I see and just where some of the opportunities uh, reside right now. Uh, what what I want to do is let's go over and take a look at the charts real quick. Let me just swing over here. There we go. Right. Sure. We'll take a look at the charts. Um, and it takes a couple of seconds to come up on the screen. But if you look at it, you can see that um, the S&P almost went in the red. In fact, one of the uh, S&P uh, futures contracts did move into the red briefly on Friday, and then it closed back up. Uh, it closed actually in the red, and then it moved into the green around 6.45, going on the uh, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, the, the futures now. Um, and if you can look here, you can see we've just given up all of the gains that we made just about in the month of February, okay? Uh, just a little bit lower, and we've given them all up for the S&P. Uh, I do see these, the, 50, the red line is the 50 uh, moving average, and the yellow line is the 200. We've given both of them up as well. Um, I don't see any divergences in here, so that does suggest that any rally is going to be met with suspicion and possibly roll back over again, all right? One other thing I want to show you um, on this chart, this is the cash index, the SPX. It's a weekly chart, and you can see every rally that we've had since we made our all-time highs back on uh, January 3rd of 2022, uh, and this is the SPX at 4812.33. We've had several big rallies, but every single one of them failed at this downslope and trend line. We had over 12 and a half percent here, 546 points. We had almost a 19 percent rally off that trough down there, almost 690 points. And then it rolled back over right right here. And then we've had this rally up 19.68 points, 690 points. So we've had a 516 point rally a 689-point rally, and a 690-point rally. So all of these rallies have been met by the markets rolling over. And if you look at on Friday, we took out that downslope and trend line, and we moved below it again. So is this just another uh, uh, rally that's going to fail and roll over and make new lows going into this year, a little bit later into this year in the summer months? like we've had before? And is the bear market really over? Well, you've got to be very careful. We also took out this um, upslope and trend line right here as well that goes way back in time. So um, these markets are um, uh, prone to volatility right now with what we have with the, um, uh, um, the bank, the SVB bank. What will Boom Boom Powell do next week? Just as a heads up, on Tuesday, we get the inflation data, and then we've got – it's going to be a very active week, okay? I mean, we get we get uh, the CPI data uh, on Tuesday, and then um, Wednesday, we get PPI data, right? So that – and then retail sales. That'll give us an idea about consumer spending. Um, Thursday, we get the um, – in addition to consumer spending, we get the residential construction. Friday, we get uh, the University of Michigan uh, Consumer Sentiment Index. So there's a lot of things going on this week around inflation. And then obviously the next week, Tuesday and Wednesday, our Federal Reserve meets. And then on Wednesday, we listen to Boom Boom Powell uh, at 2.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So it promises to be a really active uh, week and a half coming up. Okay, And we're pretty much done with earnings. So whatever pops up after that, um, all the markets are focused right now on where are the Fed's going with their terminal interest rate and what's the market forecasting. So you can see these moves here. Uh, it can be – if we – with this move right here down to about 3507, um, in fact, our, our uh, 
3507 was the um, was the uh, 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 Fibonacci node, but we actually moved down to 3502. So it came right down to that level, and then boom, we bounced up, and then we moved into January, and we had a, a pretty good uh, run up right here in January. But now it's looking at giving it all back up. A prior pivot low at 3788 is what I want to hold. And we'll see if we can hold that or not. That'll be key. Um, if we come back down here and let's just take a look at um, the Dow, uh, just to show you, because the Dow really got hit hard. Um, if we look at it, we'll look at the Dow futures. You can see here the Dow futures um, are in the red for the year. Anything above that 2022 closing price is in the green, below is in the red, and it is in the red. You can see. February, it ran along nicely, and then it just gave it all up. It attempted a rally, and it fell back over again. And you could see the 50 moving average and the 200. We broke the 200. So we've got to get all of these things in alignment. The, the MACD, there is no divergence on that as well. That suggests any rally here could be rolled over. All right, so we got to watch it very closely. And then, of course, look at the Russell. <laughs> Russell had the ugly week. It was down... 50 points on Friday alone. You can see here it also, like the S&P, briefly moved into the red for the year. All right. Now, keep in mind, the Russell was up 13.49% on February 2nd right here. And then it's given up almost every single profit. And it's just rolled over hard. In the last two days of this past week is when it really got in trouble. And it just moved down. Um, and a lot of that is a lot of the companies that or IPO companies are potential Russell candidates, technology companies. A lot of these tech companies or companies that just did IPOs and went public are going to have trouble meeting payroll because they may have to wait a while to get their money from SVB Bank. So we're seeing here it, it's, it could get ugly next week for those particular companies. Like I said, I don't see a contagion where it rolls into other areas, but that's kind of what I'm seeing right now. Uh, certainly in, in um, that that space, the tech space, um, even though it's leading the way for the year. If we look at volatility, you can see we moved up pretty good, right? We moved back into uh, zone three when we use these. I use these in our group. But you can see here um, where we're, we actually had an intraday spike up to 28.88, and then it came back down to close at 24. I mean, a little over, almost just slightly under 25. So that's the spike. And you can see right there was the prior one. So um, we we were right around that area there, right? And the last time we got up there, I did a slow dribble all the way back down. I think now, until we get through the Fed next Wednesday, it's going to stay bid, right? If we look at the um, front month volatility skew, uh, let me see. Here we go right here. We'll look at the front month volatility skew, which compares the VIX. Uh, to um, the, f the front month futures contract, which in this case is March. It's in the red. So that means we're in a backwardation. However, if we go further out in time, let's look at the back month spread, which compares March and April volatility futures. It did move into the red on that spike, but we closed nicely in the green. So we're still in a contango in the vol skew going out to April. And then if I look at the 2.8 spread, uh, on VIX, the VIX futures rather. Let's just look at that. You can see comparing March to August, it's a little bit higher. So what the markets are basically saying is uh, volatility out in time has creeped up a little bit larger than normal, right? So that could be a uh, uh, a sign that you know we may. It, it may get worse because when you see vol out in time going up like this, even though it's still in contango, uh, the backwardation area here, uh, we're not in it, but it, it really is getting close to the break even before we move into backwardation. And if you look at the bond market, the bonds were up three full handles, three and 11 ticks. Look at that move. When bonds move up, interest rates move down. Okay, you can see we had a 2023 low back over here on March 2nd, and then we've just been moving up hard ever since. The chart and the Elliott wave count would suggest it's going to roll over. Okay, it took out the 50. I want to see what it does. Right over here and over here, it failed at the 200. So if it starts to fail here and roll over, um, and we got the feds coming up. So if they start 
if they keep with their policy of hiking rates, it's going to get really ugly. Um, but anyway, that's what I'm looking at in the bond market. And of course, if we look at the 10-year interest rate, you can see it falling off a cliff. You can see that gap down. It always tends to close these gaps, okay? You can see we took out a prior pivot high, uh, and we gapped up, and then we closed the gap right here. Uh, and now we're moving back down here. So Again, below the 50 moving average, and then the 200 is sitting slightly below it. I do not think we're going to go that low. I think it's going to hold up here till we get through the Feds to kind of see where everybody wants to go. U.S. dollar, um, generally with interest rates coming down, you're going to see the dollar coming down. You can see it's in the green for the year, but it's backing off the highs that it made on um, March 8th. Um, and if we look at the euro, which which I'm just loading up, I want to go long. Not yet, not ready yet. You can see the euro is doing a double test um, um, uh, of the uh, 2023 lows. Even though we're just in the year, you can see it's testing it, and now it's holding up at the 50 EMA. The 50 EMA for the euro and the dollar are key levels because um, you get a lot of algos that fire off around that. So. That's a little bit about what I'm seeing there across the currency market. And if you look at gold, um, it's been very volatile. Strong up days, strong down days. You can see it moved down for almost all week. And then on Thursday and Friday, it moved up and took out the prior pivot high right here. Okay. And it moved back up over the 50 uh, moving average. So, and then there's some overhead resistance sitting right here as well. Long term, I'm bullish gold. Short term, this is. It moved up because interest rates came down really hard. Um, and I think if Boom Boom Powell only does a 25 uh, basis point uh, rate hike, we'll get some more energy to the upside in gold as well. Okay. Uh, long term, I am bullish gold, but short term, I don't play it when you got all this movement like this. It's just, it's, 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 you know, it's flip a coin, is kind of what I guess I'm trying to say. Um, and of course, if we look at oil, we've got a way we're trading oil in our group and it's doing very well. You can see it's just it just cycles. That's all it's doing right now. It's cycling up uh, to this zone up here and cycling down to this zone. It could not get into the green for the year. You can see the 2022 closing price of 80.51 um, uh, in the futures market and now WTI, and now it's working its way back down again. Okay. Once it gets in the middle, it's kind of a no man's uh, trade for me. I want to wait until it gets extended either to the upside or to the downside. Uh, and then, of course, Nat Gas, uh, we already shorted this thing really well back over here in Q4 of last year. And it's just been a home run for us. As it took out my my um, projected support point, I said it will probably come up and try and challenge it. It did, but it rolled back over. Right. And I just see Nat, Nat Gas has a very difficult time here in the U.S. of holding anything over three and a half or four. And when it got up over here, these were just no brainer trades. These are low hanging fruit trades when it's sitting up around nine and a half. And we took them and made some good money in it. All right, everybody, that's kind of where the markets are sitting right now. Uh, it's going to be a very interesting week this week. Um, it's going to be interesting. Follow volatility and see what it wants to do. It moved up. It spiked up very strongly on Friday. So we'll see if the markets are calm, a little bit more calm. Um, and we'll see how things uh, shake themselves out. Members, I will see you this Sunday evening in our weekly market watch. Have a great one, everybody. Ciao now.